I'd like to continue speaking out of Numbers chapter number 6. Numbers chapter number 6. Lord began to shed light on uh, our lives. A little bit of patience. Enduring under God's Word, we, we learn a great deal. We, um, we learn who He is, what He's done. And we do, we find out what we are. But what a blessing that God chose you. I had a brother to tell me up in Rocky Mount one time that out of his family, he said his family was like a bowl of jelly beans. And he said there was one black one in it. <laughs> and he said that was the one that God God chose. And he just, he was all tearful when he would tell it. So it was from his heart. And it is a great mercy of God. Um, when Moses told Aaron to do this, this was instruction from God because everything in this book is about Jesus Christ. It was about Him coming into this world to save sinners. He came to do the will of God. He was slain from the foundation of the world. And you know, I've, I've been so cold with that at times. I think, well, Jesus was already, He was already there. God didn't let nothing happen. But what? Isn't that so cold? But dear soul, you're a man, a woman made in the image of God. I promise you God has feelings. <laughs> he hates. He loves. All of those things. But His is perfect. Unlike ours. So we're being unraveled. After the sacrifice every year that the high priest would make, the high priest was an important figure. Jesus is called the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. He was a king and a priest. He rules and he makes sacrifice and offerings to God for you. And after the sacrifice, Aaron and his sons were to make sure that they, that they did this in verse 23. Speak unto Aaron and his sons. And in verse 24, he said, Tell them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make His face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. And the Lord lift up His countenance upon thee and give thee peace. The significance of this, after the sacrifice, uh, if the high priest made it out of there, he, he made it out alive. The sacrifice was acceptable. It is a fearful thing to deal with this part of God. He's very sincere about this. But this is a blessing that comes because the sacrifice was made and God's anger, God's wrath was appeased. Now, it was you know it was nothing permanent. It was a picture for those in those days to understand that Messiah would come and that He would live a life such in this world that this just blows my mind that even in his life he was appeasing God everything he did he lived with man and God and he balanced it he pleased God and man his was to do the will of God in this and as a brother told you he did it perfectly hallelujah what a savior He's wonderful. There's not another one like Him. And I tell you what, the, the one that has to be appeased right there, that part of God, I do not want to face without blessings from Him, with His Son, and without His face shining upon me, and without His countenance being lifted up on me. How do you think you're going to worship when Jesus comes? You're just going to 
join in with the band or <laughs> what's it going to be? I mean, do, do you not dread that day that when we will see him as he is and in that moment, in that twinkling of an eye, we're going to see both sides of the story all at once and be changed. That, that's going to be the most horrifying twinkling that I, we've ever known. But to be changed instantly, wow, what a quickening. What a reviving that will be. Never to be like this again. Can't even cry no more about sad things. Hallelujah. Well, let's look at a little bit more of what these guys were here for in 1 Corinthians, uh, not Corinthians, Chronicles 23. Chronicles 23. In verse, somewhere around verse number 13. <clears throat> See what this high priest's job was. <clears throat> In verse 13, the sons of Amram and Aaron and Moses, and Aaron was separated that he should sanctify the most holy things, he and his sons forever, to burn incense before the Lord. This was a picture of all of the prayers of the saints ascending to God because it smells good to him. Does it smell good to God whenever you're praying as the brother prayed for us at out of God's will? You ask amiss. Does that smell good to God? No. But with the Holy Spirit making intercession, it's made to smell good to God. How much do you need Him? Well, let's look at what the job was. To burn incense before the Lord... To do what? Thank you, brother. Um, to minister unto Him and to bless His name forever. What was the high priest's job? Was it, was it as it is today for the preacher to come into the church house and please the folks? Give them what they want? Start a new program that will get this crowd in. Let's get a band. Hey, a baseball team. You think that's pleasing to God. God don't care about your stuff. Let me tell you something about sin. When you go to heaven to be with Jesus, you won't, have, you won't be dealing with sin no more. Jesus Christ destroyed sin. Guess where it's at? It's in hell. That's all folks in hell will ever deal with is their sin. There's no end to it. It's not... Godly sorrow now is what you want. Not worldly. You have heard of the patience of Job. Job was a real man. You've heard of Daniel. You've heard of Joseph. And the things that happened to him. You have heard of his patience. But it was his patience that I'm not worried about this. God's got it. Where was his fight? It was in his heart. It was to know that God had sent this. There is a reason for this. And to rest upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. No other will I trust. I find no peace in this world. Even when I'm considering happiness and doing things in this world that just get me through the day, there's no real happiness to it. It doesn't last. Why do you have to go back and do it again? It didn't last. Anything that is built that's on, that not on the foundation of Christ will be burned up. And Paul even tells us to thank God that it is. Because God ain't going to have nothing built on this but belongs. Hallelujah. So the high priest was to minister to God 
for the sinful people, the errors of the people. But before he even did that, not Jesus, but before that high priest, Aaron, ever did that, he had to offer a sacrifice for his own sins. Wow. But he's ministering to God. God's the one you want to please. And so we get our minds focused to what this really is and we might start to worship a little bit. We might start to get on God's good side if we'll brag on His Son a little bit. Amen? You like people to brag on yours and ain't a one of them worth bragging on. I mean, there's no good in us. Well, I love you to death, kids. I really do. But when you're talking about the spiritual things of the Lord, you've got to understand that there is nothing good in us and that this God has to be appeased with the goodness that He's showered you with. You've heard uh, so many of us make reference to how much God's mercy is is just washed all over you every day. You don't even consider it. We don't. Even, you, you raise up kids and they're falling over stuff. You give them, and and the the only thing they're mad about is Christmas when they didn't get what they wanted. <laughs> but dear soul, this is the kingdom of God, and God's not going to have anybody that's not thankful for so great a salvation as this. This is the greatest thing in your life. And you got Jesus Christ, the high priest, ministering on your behalf. He's interceding on your behalf. And the question for you, is His intercession good enough for a sinner like me? He's going to have to overcome everything in your life where Job said, here's Job now that had the patience of Job saying, I wish, I, he didn't say it just like this, this is the way Mike so Walker would say it, I wish I was dead. Joseph, 20 years. I got me a blackberry bush that this man gave me over there and that thing has climbed over the fence and going everywhere. I'm afraid it's going to get me at night and strangle me. That bush's name is Joseph. Okay, <laughs> that's what I was going to ask you. It has climbed over the wall. Dear soul, that's what Jesus has did. He is a high priest that's representing you in His facial ability to look at God with His countenance and is blessing you. <laughs> is it not right that we should offer, Paul says, our bodies as a living sacrifice? Morgan, do not go out tonight and kill yourself. <laughs> That's not pleasing God. But what God requires... What God sends, it is His requirement that we endure it patiently. We're brothers and sisters, companions in tribulations. Brother Mike, we're not going to grow as long as you preach this. Yes, we are. We're going to grow in grace and in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ or I don't want to grow. Amen. Because I got I got an enemy that he ain't very far off. I I feel him sniffing me, and his name is death. Then he's gonna have to be overcome. My hope is in Jesus. And like Dolly Parton said, there was always Jesus. It don't matter where what it was. There was always Jesus. When it is all a bust, there was always Jesus. Amen. He promised. But dear soul, that don't mean that me and you don't have these feelings, that we don't have these trials in this stuff that has to be overcome. You know, and, and instead of being like Brother John used to say, why are you doing this to me? Why not you? Yeah. Why not you? Why ain't it worse? 
Amen. Don't, don't look for worse. Ask the Lord to be merciful. Look at Luke chapter number 9. <clears throat> it, so it come after the decease of the victim that this blessing was to come because they acknowledged that God was appeased because the high priest come out and blessed them, said God accepted the sacrifice. It was good enough. Y'all, y'all didn't bring that old lamb that nobody wanted. You know, the one that had mange. You brought the best one you had. And that's what God did. He offered the best He had. And, and we were to be uh, thankful that the, that the face of God, just think about that. One day you're going to look in the face of Jesus Christ. You're looking at it now, but you're looking at it spiritually while you hear this gospel preached. I, I'm not preaching a lesson to you. I can't do that. We, you'll have to get somebody else to do it. I'm preaching a person to you. I'm trying to preach to you the person that I believe Jesus is. If you know somebody, if, if I had to tell you who Joseph was, you wouldn't like it. We would describe, we would tell what we know of that person. And there's so you can't tell nobody about Jesus if, if you don't know what he looks like, if you don't know what his countenance is like, that you don't know what his blessings are like. You got a diamond in the rough. You got God working with you. Look at verse 27 <clears throat> through 36. I ain't even going to get started in this. I'm so stupid. I got a page full right here. <clears throat> verse uh, you said you was preaching a person, Brother Mike. It's not a page. Verse 27. I heard you, John. Verse 27. <laughs> but I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death until they see the kingdom of God. All right. Look at the, the rest of this down through uh, a few of these verses. And it came to pass about eight days these things these sayings that he took Peter and John and James and he went up into the mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his what? His countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men who was Moses and Elias who appeared in glory with him. And what were they talking about? His decease. What is the transfiguration about? It is the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. It is God making His face to shine upon us. It is God lifting up His countenance upon us. It is God blessing us even if we have to hear the voice that these boys have to hear because their minds were not right. They were not praying right, Joseph. They were not requesting from God right. And what they heard was, This is my son, hear ye him. Listen to what he's got to say. This is the blessing of God that all of the stuff that's going to happen in your life, I promise you children, I promise you adults, that your life is not going to be a bed of roses. I promise you that. It's not going to happen. I don't care what Mickey says. It ain't going to happen. In this world ye shall have tribulation. But wouldn't you like to come to, as the brother said, and look upon him that you've pierced, and know that God is pleased with that. And when He did that as your high priest, not only was He the sacrifice, but He was your high priest ministering to God saying, Get it all right now! Get every bit of it! You're so, you, don't, you ain't going to know nobody nothing. But you're going to be thankful in this world for this one that did that. That even now, 
With, hey, dear soul, the world does not understand that the only reason God's allowing them to go on like they are is because there's a few believers left in this place that God ain't through with yet. You ever smelt good cooking? Man, especially when you're hungry. Man, you just, I mean, the weed eater just falls out of your hand. What happens if you don't drop that weed eater? <laughs> that smell goes away. Smell the cooking and go get some. Amen? Are you smelling the cooking? Are you considering your ways that Jesus Christ was ministering to God for you? <laughs> I, can't, I, I cannot believe I'm almost dead. And I've just found this out, the, the extent of it. It wasn't to, to make all the people feel good. Let's be God's people. And let's don't be like the world. Man, these people are in for a rude awakening. They think they're doing God's business. Not even acknowledging the price that is paid for such a salvation. You say, Brother Mike, you say salvation is by works. No, it ain't. Jesus said the works of God is to believe. And when you hear the Word of God, it, it's supposed to have an effect on you. Amen? It's supposed to bother you. It, 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 it's supposed to tell you in your heart and in your conscience, you just did wrong. And even when you did right, you say, shucks, it weren't nothing. <laughs> ain't that right? You know better than to get caught up in that. That ain't no good with God. God don't care about your money. He don't care about your status quo. Shingles don't care. He cares about His glory. He cares about His honor, about His praise. Because if anybody says that somebody's something ought to be praised, God's the one that would know. He's the one created this for what? His pleasure. And it was His pleasure that He have a high priest ministering to Him for the likes of being you. Look at Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter number 1. <clears throat> Later on, Peter alludes to that event in the mount. <clears throat> and, and, he, and he tells the people, you, you have a more sure word of prophecy than what was in the times past. You, you are those that have the benefit of having the high priest that's still there. He lives forever to do what? Make intercession. He's ministering to God for you. Isn't that amazing? And, and we just get up every day and you know, you know what I'll say when I don't want uh, another cup of yogurt? I'll say, Jerry James! <laughs> Go ahead, fatty! <laughs> hey, it's the truth. Uh, in First Peter, but listen to what Peter says, what he wants them to take with them in uh, somewhere around verse 15. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be after my what? Decease to have these things always in remembrance. Who cares after your decease, Peter? Who gives a hoot about when you're dead? Who gives a hoot when you're dead, John? That, that was Daddy Ben. You know, oh, boy, I remember when he took me fishing. <laughs> it's no good. It only makes sorrow. But after Peter's decease, he tells them that you can have this in remembrance. How that when we were with him in the Holy Mount, we saw his face. We saw his countenance. We received His blessings. 
and we have finished our course and we are at, the, I, I mean, God had already told him how he was going to take him. Peter, do you love me? Oh, it gets so much easier when you get my age and everything just falls into place. But whenever God starts saying, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And he says, feed my sheep. Leave something with them after your decease that they can remember. I was talking to my cousin and uh, yesterday. I was too sorry to go to his mama's funeral. And I told him I was sorry. And then he, he told me a story about my mama that I didn't know. <clears throat> Just so I like these stories. See, I can take this with me now. After his decease, after... Whatever. He said, I, I wanted to be in the Boy Scouts and, and, and we didn't have the money and your mama bought me a, a uniform. I won't never forget that. I love stories. And I thought, yeah, that was my mama. And dear so when you tell the things of Jesus to these, we pray that after our decease, that they will remember that there is a great high priest that is interceding on your behalf. That he is ministering to God who is angry with the wicked every day. He finds fault in the elect angels. They cover their faces, their feet, they hide. But He chose you as the closest thing to Him. He, clothed, he chose you to understand His countenance, His face, His blessings, His heart, His wants, His desires, everything that you are not, that He was, He is going to give you in complete blessing when you leave this world. Fight the fight. It's worth the fight. Any other fight you get in, you're going to lose because there's no end to it. Thank you, Jesus. Look at Luke 13. And I'm going to tell you something else. Let me tell you this about that. Luke 13. Who's he mad with? I don't know. <laughs> He's mad with himself, Levi. Because if, if I can't get to the foundation of Jesus Christ, I just ain't got that solid, son. I I got nothing to stand on. It, it boy, you, you get out of a boat down there on that marsh in that mud, you find out something. Hey, you can't walk in that stuff. <laughs> yeah. So you want something solid when you're dealing with God. When you're dealing with anything in this world. You want to be on the foundation. There's one verse down here in this chapter, verse 35. Look, can't, uh, can't you see that till uh, you, you don't really want to see Jesus right now if you don't really want to see Him. And what I'm saying is that you've got to acknowledge you have to acknowledge who He is. You can't just believe in Jesus. To believe in Jesus is to have Him in you and you in Him. And you begin to not like what you see about yourself. You don't like what you see about others. But then you begin to have such a fear in you of this God that did this to His own Son, He spared not His own Son, that you begin to pray real prayers for each other. That God preserve your precious soul. I'm amazed that, that, that Clay and John and his, their families are even still here. I thought we'd be folded up by now because... They don't nobody want cross preaching. 
The cross is taken out of it. It's not necessary. You, dear soul, that's the apex of the whole thing. That's where God's love was displayed in His wrath. Where Jesus Christ interceded for me and you, He ministered to God. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. If they did not consider who He was, He had just told them, Jerusalem, that killeth the prophets and stoneth them that are sent unto thee. How oft would I have gathered thy children together? I, I, I'd have saved your whole house. But you didn't consider this. You didn't consider your way. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. And verily I say unto you, ye shall not see me until the time come when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Do you like the preacher or not? <laughs> Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. How do you know that I'm preaching Jesus? How do you know that I'm not preaching Lucifer himself to you? If you are built on any other foundation than Jesus Christ, you don't even know who I'm talking about. But if Jesus Christ is having to intercede for you before God and to make, and, and you just can't seem to go on until God make His face shine on you, lift up His countenance on you, get you up out of this dung pile and bless you with His presence, you ain't got no life in you. See, that's hard stuff. I, I tell you what, I, man, I, Miss Kim, God has made me so sick on my stomach with this gospel at times and the things He's done in my life. And I, and I didn't do nothing wrong. I don't deserve this. You don't know who you fooling with, Big Red. Give glory to God. Now you better start, Mr. Red, you better start being thankful for this one. You know, boy, I'd, I'd show out in the classroom when she'd walk out, Keaton, when that teacher'd leave. I'd thump people on the head. <laughs> and then they come back in, there he is. There's old Red. Get the board out. Hey, he's always there. He's always there. Hallelujah. I'm glad that the brother said when he came in, he said, don't let us buy with nothing. Ain't, isn't it a terrible thing to have God in your conscience? Isn't it a terrible thing that you can't just bust somebody one while they're doing it to you? <laughs> isn't it terrible that you've got to be like Jesus? It's awful the way Brother Harold thinks, y'all. <laughs> he thinks he's the only sinner in the room. <laughs> Praise God for Jesus. I'm glad God tells us. Look at John 16, verse 20. John 16, verse 20. <clears throat> I like this one right here, Joseph. <clears throat> Remember what Paul said? Hey, tie the Scriptures together. Keaton, when you're out there on that field and you're knocking people's hat off, remember to be merciful. Help the old boy up. <laughs> hey, because one represented you. By one man, what did, what did Grandpa Adam do to us? We all died. We we it's it's witnessed every day. We we see funerals every day. I, I tell Susan everywhere we go, I see a pretty graveyard. I say that's where I want to be. But there's so one represented you, a high priest, to God, with the right countenance for sinners. 
with the right face of anguish for sinners. So that when acceptance, when appeasement was made, He could turn around and bless you with the glory of it. Daggone, I nailed it. He showed it. He nailed it. That's what He did. Don't nobody want to talk about the cross and what Jesus did. Get on to the good stuff. That is the good stuff. I'll I tell you what, I'd, I'd, I'd rather sit out here with y'all and these mosquitoes and give appreciation to Him and what He's done than be in the finest houses of gold and silver that they are. Your gold is cankered. Your silver, I forget how it said it. Your silver's, you know. But the kingdom you go into, you bring in your brass. You ain't even polished it. You bring in your old brass to God and He's going to give you gold. Solid gold. Ain't God good? God's just flat good to us. Oh, my soul. Verily, verily, I say unto you that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice and ye shall be sorrowful. Hello, Christians! Hello there, Mr. Feel Good. Well, you must not be saved. No, sir, I beg to differ with you. You must not be saved because Jesus Christ said, Ye shall sorrow. You're going to have sorrow in this world, and it's not going to be merely over what Washington is doing, what your job is doing, what your family's doing. It's going to be over the condition of your soul not being right with God. Not knowing what to pray. Not knowing what to say. And depending on God through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit to make the right request for you and give you enough sense in that empty head to wait on God's will to be performed. You have heard of the patience of Job. How'd he wind up? And he wound up a, all that stuff that became unimportant to him. God just said, here. <laughs> Amen. I'd rather have Jesus, wouldn't you? Your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Now, I know this is talking about after his resurrection, after he had died. But dear so. You cannot read this Bible and what these apostles wrote and think that you're not going to have sorrows in this world. Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ knows you by your sorrows. We'd have never heard of Job if he hadn't the things that happened to him hadn't happened. After his decease, now it's talked about. After Jesus Christ deceased, now it's talked about. This is over 2,000 years ago. And we're preaching it down here in the Okefenokee Swamp. One of the last places. Dear soul, the gospel's been around the world. It ain't got nowhere else to go unless we put it on Sputnik. I'm pretty sure there's Martians out there because I've seen a good many of them yesterday. About three heads. <laughs> oh, Lord. Ain't God good to us? Thank you, Jesus. Look at Revelation chapter number 1. <clears throat> when I do that in the huddle, Keaton, I'm getting ready to run my famous play. <clears throat> So, you're made one with Christ because by one man. Who you want to destroy your sin that, that God's going to put in hell? Yeah. I want to be represented by my high priest. Why, well, he's my king too. Everything he's ever done. I hope this is clear to the bell to you. 
I hope this means something to you. The simplicity of the gospel is so vitally important that you understand this person, that He has begotten you. We have children. We die. They die. It, uh, the brother just told us that if you're eating the Word of God, it lasts how long? Forever. Well, I'm going to put my money over here in the CD. <laughs> you better put your soul in Jesus' hands and eat His words. Does this cooking smell good to you? Do you like the cooking? If not, we need to get a cook. In verse number 5, listen. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, that's us, that's our boy, that's the one we had. We were dead. And the prince of the kings of the earth. Not only is Jesus Christ a king and a priest, but what has He made you? What do you what's your job, Mr. Priest? Jesus' job was to minister to God. This all I found that in my prayers, it's not just my prayers making requests to God, but it's also in fasting and giving up things in this world to try to get God to listen to me. That's a door that Jesus Christ, He told us how to pray. He told us how to fast. You ain't, dear soul, if all you want is God to do something for you, you're in the wrong business. Unto Him that loved us and washed us from our sins in His own blood, O oh, Lord Jesus, and hath made us kings and priests unto who? Well, I want the world to see it. I want everybody to know that I'm Jesus Christ, King and Priest, so that they'll know that we're God's people. That ain't who He made you. Jesus knew who He was. And dear soul, the saints of God know who they are because Jesus Christ has made them kings and priests. That's how good the intercession is that you don't talk to angels. You don't talk to a priest behind a curtain that's got worse sins than you do, by the way. You talk to Jesus Christ Himself. And Jesus said, and by the way, when this is all said and done, I'll take you straight to the Father. That ain't never been like it is now. He's appeased. He's satisfied. When will I be? Oh, my soul. To find a burden... Dear so these kings and these priests that Jesus Christ has made now, you know who they are? They're that crowd that says, Lord, when saw I thee hungry? When, I, when saw I thee thirsty? When you did it to one of these, you was ministering to me. You wasn't just doing it because I feel so sorry for that poor soul. Let me see if I've got some money. Why did you do it? Dear so we're ministering to God in true repentance, thankfulness, because Jesus Christ has pleased Him. And we're pleading with Him to make intercession for us and help us just make it a little bit further. 
Hey, if it was a if it was a real issue for Paul saying after I preached to others that I myself should be made shipwrecked, it was because he had a a worry in his mind that that can happen. I guarantee you, Jesus, uh, <laughs> Jesus, Judas did not know what he was capable of. He didn't know. And so you got to hang on to this. You got to give, give your heart and your soul to Jesus. And I, I, I know we fall along the way, I, but it's it's a warfare, it's a fight. That flesh of yours is never going to go along with this. It's just like right now. Some of you, that's right. I can see what you're thinking. Doesn't he know it's 12 o'clock? No, but Jesus does. God is so good to us. He has made us kings and priests unto God and His Father. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, He cometh with clouds. And every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, brother Harold, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. There is one thing that I find in true Christians that holds true when you talk to them about the end of where we're headed. Is they looking forward? to Jesus Christ being honored and glorified once and forevermore for so great a salvation. Do what you do for the glory of God. He's made you kings and priests. And that, dear soul, is because you're he has made you God, the fathers, kings, and priests in this world. I got some more to say about that, but we ain't going to get to say it today. We're going to have to say it next week if the Lord tarries. And I don't even know if it's my turn to preach. I don't even know if I'll be here next week. And if I ain't, guess who I'll be with? Amen. He hath made you kings and priests to Him. Don't nobody else know who you are? While we was asked last night, are, are y'all still over there in that little place? <laughs> you know what people are saying when they're not saying it? Oh, I said, yeah, we're that, we're that big one. We don't have any competition. <laughs> we're doing well. <laughs> Please don't come. <laughs> May the Lord Jesus Christ bless your precious soul. Think about these things. What? How is it that God has made you kings and priests to Himself? Think about it. If you really get to praise His Son, you know there's no other way to get to Him. But if you are actually God's begotten children, and He has made you kings and priests, what that is might surprise you. And when you find out, let me know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. I appreciate y'all.